All right. We're talking about projectiles now. This is our final application and our most exciting application of the kinematics that we've been talking about. So, and you're going to get to do a lab on this tomorrow. The first kind of projectile we're going to talk about is a, well, let's talk about projectiles in general. A projectile is an object that moves solely under the influence of gravity. Nothing else acts on it. So, you throw a baseball, once it leaves your hand, the only thing acting on it, the only thing changing the, the motion of the baseball is gravity pulling down on it. Nothing else does that anymore. An airplane or a rocket ship are being pushed by something. That push is more than gravity. Airplanes also have lift. But that's something other than gravity. So, for a projectile, a definitive thing that we can say that becomes very helpful is that the acceleration is always equal to 10 meters per second in the downward direction. That's all in the y direction. So we can also say that the acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero. That gives me constant velocity in x. If gravity is the only thing acting on a projectile, the y velocity is going to change because of that gravity. But in the x direction, it's going to be constant. So for any kind of projectile we have, whether we um, are firing something straight off a cliff, and it falls like that, or we fire it on level ground, at every single point along the way, the velocity in the x direction is going to be the same. But at the very top, but in the y direction, things are going to change. Here we start off with zero velocity in the y, and we fall down. We get faster in the y. Here we slow down in the y, we stop, and we speed up and come back down. And in fact, this half of this motion is identical to a horizontal projectile. horizontal projectile, and then we'll have projectiles at an angle. Horizontal projectile is the first thing that we're going to talk about because it is easiest. But the thing that we're going to remember as we go all the way through this is that the acceleration in the y direction is 10 meters per second squared down, and the acceleration in the x direction is always zero. So, a horizontal projectile, we are on top of a cliff or a building, or, or we're standing straight up. Let's say we've got 20 meters. We're going to fire something off just in the x direction. That's what makes it a horizontal projectile. So we have a velocity in the x equal to, uh, let's just say, 10 meters per second. Now, in order to solve these problems, we're going to do just like what we did with the stream problem and look at x... Oh. Shoot. Let's undo some stuff. Let's take this back over here. Redo it. we got 20 meters. 10 meters per second. We're going to look at x stuff and we're going to look at y stuff. I'm going to shrink that down so they have room to work for our x stuff and our y stuff. Now we know the path that we're going to follow is going to be that nice par parabolic path from here straight down. Starting in the x. All of this 10 meters per second is in the x. So my initial velocity in the x direction is 10 meters per second. And we know that our acceleration in the x is zero. We talked about that over here. 
What that means is that at every point in this object's fall, the velocity is going to be 10 meters per second. It's a constant velocity. So even when it hits the ground over here, it's going to have a velocity of 10 meters per second in the x-direction. That will not have changed. But that's not enough to let me know how far this thing goes in the x. That's really what we're after with this. Where's my object going to land? Well, I can't answer that with the things that I know in the x-direction, so let's look at the y. In the y-direction, my initial velocity is zero. And this 10 meters per second is all horizontal. So, the initial velocity in the y is zero. The acceleration, as we discussed, is 10 meters per second squared down. And we have a delta y. We're starting off below where we began. So our delta y is 20 meters down. Now, we don't have to make anything negative here, and I'll show you that as we go through the math. So, what we want is the time in order to find this delta x. Delta x is going to be the velocity times the time. We just need the time. So we come over here in the y direction, and we use delta y equals v0t plus one-half at squared. But because of this, that goes away. I have delta y equals one-half at squared. Do some algebra, multiply by 2 to divide by a, take a square root, and we have the square root of 2 delta y over a is equal to our time. So that's the square root of 2 times 20 over 10 equals our delta y. Now, these things are both pointing in the same direction. I could make them both negative. Then I'd have 2 times negative 20 divided by negative 10. But that's the exact same thing as making them both positive. As far as I'm concerned, as long as all of the directions in a problem are in agreement, we do not have to make anything negative. I usually leave it positive. This tells me that my time is two seconds. So if we come over here, my delta x is 10 meters per second times two seconds. Per second, seconds goes away. And I'm left with a delta x of 20 meters. Horizontal projectile done. It's very straightforward and simple. Horizontal projectile. Projectiles at an angle, I think, are a lot of fun. Projectile at an angle, we start off with a flat surface, start off, and we fire. There are two questions that we ask with this. Let's go ahead and get some information down, though. Um, let's say we go at 100 meters per second, and we're at 30 degrees. Sorry for the poor handwriting on that. Let's go ahead and... Resize. Now, when we fire this thing, we know that it's going to go in a nice parabolic curve. And we're going to know some things at some different points. Now, our, our x information and our y information for this start off the same. The acceleration in the x is always zero. The acceleration in the y is always 10 meters per second squared down. Those two things are what it means to be a projectile. Now, let's say we're going with how far. We want to know what's happening here. That's a how far question. So, for how far, we're going to know more information just looking at the problem before we even deal with our initial conditions. In the y direction, we start off here at this level and we end at that level. What that tells me, if I'm just looking at the y coordinate, I start off at zero and I end at zero. I have no delta y whatsoever. These are the things that we know when we are asking 
how far. It's one type of problem. So, let's get into it. This 100 meters per second, we have to take and break up. We have 100 here. We have 100 cosine 30 down here. That's 86.6 meters per second. And up here, we have 100 sine 30. That's 50 meters per second. So my initial velocity in the x is 86.6 meters per second. My initial velocity in the y is 50 meters per second. Because of this, we're going to have to look at the direction that's in. Well, that's up. Which means I'm going to have to make this 10 negative. So, 50 meters per second up, negative 10 meters per second squared down. If I want my delta x, if I want to answer how far, I need the initial velocity times time. So let's take and shrink some of that so we have room to work. I need time. We are again going to look at delta y equals v0 t plus 1 half a t squared. In this case, delta y goes away because it's zero and I get negative v0t plus one-half at squared. I'm sorry, negative v0t equals one-half at squared. Doing a little algebra, not a lot. We see one of the t's goes away. So I've got negative 2v0 over a is equal to my time. Now we just plug everything in. We've got negative 2 times 50 divided by negative 10 gives me my time. And so that time comes out to be positive 10 seconds, which is good. If you get a negative time, you did something wrong. So we take that, plug that in over here, and we see that our delta x is going to be our initial velocity in the x, 86.6 .6 times 10. So our delta x comes out to be 866 meters. That answers the question, how far? We're going to take this same problem, leave that stuff up there. That answers how far. Well, we're not going to look at how far anymore. We're not going to look at how far anymore. So that's not true anymore. What we're going to look at now is this point, or how high. How high is my projectile going to go? Looking at how high, that gives me another piece of information. First off, for how high, we don't need to look at anything in the x direction. It's all in the y. The other thing that we can say is that at the very top of this projectile's arc, it's going from having a positive velocity to having a velocity that is now going to be in the downward direction. That means at the very top, the final velocity is equal to zero. So now I can solve for my delta y, or my how high, to this problem. Pretty straightforward. We have acceleration, we have initial velocity, we have final velocity, and we want delta y. If you consult your equation table, you got v squared equals v0 squared plus 2a delta y. Our final velocity is 0, so doing a little, little algebra. Negative v0 squared divided by 2a gives us our delta y. Plugging our numbers in, that's negative 50 squared divided by 2 times negative 10 gives me our delta y. And that comes out to be 125 meters. All right, we're getting close to 15 minutes, so we're going to leave this as it is now. Tomorrow in class, we're going to take it a step further. And tomorrow in class... I think as we talk about this, we're going to look at the case of a projectile 
that does not land on level ground. We're going to look at what to do uh, when delta y does not equal zero for a regular projectile and figure out how to determine delta x from there. So that's our next step for tomorrow.